Today I'm going to show you how to do the Biba trellis stitch. This pattern is featured in section 5 of the Rebound Shawl by More Than Knots. Um, I apologize in advance, I will do my best at editing, but there's a lot of knitting to this pattern, so I'm going to be cutting out things that you don't need to see. So here goes. Um, the Biba trellis stitch can be done, it's kind of a honeycomb pattern, it can be done in a single color. I'm going to show you today how to add different colors, um, yeah, contrast colors, but I will um, explain where um, you would need to make changes if you were just using a solid. It's very pretty that way also. Uh, it starts out with three rows of reverse stockinette stitch, which I have done um, already. That is purling on the right side of the fabric and knitting on the wrong side. Okay, next we're going to get ready to add in our contrast color. So this is on the wrong side of the work. Um, I'm going to use this gray color. I apologize that it is so dark. I'm hoping that you're going to be able to see it okay. Um, all right, so starting out, you're going to Purl eight. One, two, okay, purl eight. Then you slip the next three stitches, and because I'm on the wrong side of the work, the um, float will be carried behind the work. Um, and then purl 11 stitches. Then slip three again and end up with purl eight. Okay, so if you were doing this in a single color, you would of course just worked that row um, with the oatmeal color here. All right, so now in row two, we are back to the right side and you're simply gonna follow the pattern that you've established. Um, you're gonna start out by knitting eight. So these little window pane effects are done in stockinette and then the outlines are done in reverse stockinette. Knit eight, slip three, knit 11. Four, five, six. So here I am finishing up that last wrong side row of the first part of the trellis. Next, you're going to drop that contrast yarn and Sometimes you have to cut the yarn that it's not going to be at the correct end for you to work with it next. Um, so I'm just going to show you when you're using a contrast color, um, I'm going to need to work one row of stockinette slipping the three stitches with the um, oatmeal color because if I were to work a purl row first here, the um, transition between the stitches, let me show you, is gonna, you're gonna see the bump. Um, see how that happens? It just doesn't look very nice. So by working one row of stockinette stitch, here I am finishing up my last reverse stockinette stitch row with the oatmeal. Sorry for the banging when I do that. And now it's time to introduce the contrast color again. And this time we're going to be staggering these honeycombs. So I'm going to be placing one here and one here. So to do that, we start out with knit one, slip three, knit 11, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. I do a lot of counting to myself when I knit. <laughs> Helps keep track of things. Slip the three and then knit eleven, slip three again. Um, and I will be working four more rows. Remember, this is stockinette stitch. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Slip three, knit one. I'm going to work these this on the wrong side, and then three more rows. Um, a total of five rows in stockinette stitch, doing the slips of the three stitches for um, this, this block. All right, so here I am finishing up that last row of stockinette. This is like magic, isn't it? <laughs> Time elapsed photography. Um, so I've got my next stack of um, honeycomb patterns, and you can see it looks very much like bricks. Uh, I'm going to be starting with my main color, my oatmeal color, on the wrong side this time. So I wanted to point out to you that, and again, you would be in real life you would be cutting these because they're not on the right end. All right, I need to work a row of stockinette stitch. And remember the slip stitches, I am gonna continue to slip when I'm doing this row. Um, I have to start with a purl row um, so that it is stockinette on the right side. And again, in, in case uh, I didn't mention this before, we are working this stockinette stitch row um, with the main color because we are using a contrast color and it helps with the, the color transition. Um, if you were only using the oatmeal or only the gray um, for this textured stitch, you do not need to do this row. You just simply can go into a three row reverse stockinette block. Um, and it is beautiful with one color. I've done this before. Um, in rebound, we are using contrast colors behind. Um, and that's why I'm showing this. Okay, so that was the first row. And now, don't forget you're working reverse stockinette. Um, and you're gonna go straight across those slip stitches when you're working reverse stockinette, as so. Teeny bit more, and then I'm gonna cut out and show you what it looks like at the end. So here I am finishing up, um, I just got started on the last row of the reverse stockinette stitch in the B Petralis. And, um, this is a, a terrific stitch for scarves. It's nice and lofty um, and uh, a great addition to shawls as well, as many of you know. So here I am, almost finished, and then you'll see. Okay. So when this gets blocked out, these open right up. Isn't that beautiful? It looks like magic, I think. It's uh, with those slip. The Biba Trellis is a 21 row pattern um, that requires uh, a multiple of 14 stitches plus five for the beginning and end of the pattern. I had 33 stitches on this pattern to make um, two blocks three blocks kind of pattern. Um, the 21 rows, multiple of 14 stitches plus five, the B Petralis.